Dining at Disney Podcast. The Dining at Disney Podcast. Your ultimate source for the wonderful world of dining at the Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resort. You'll discover all the best restaurants and food as you hungrily explore the Disney parks. Let's do this thing! The Dining at Disney Podcast. And now your hosts, Kristen and Bubba. Hello and welcome to the Dining at Disney Podcast. I'm Kristen. Hope everybody is doing well. Bubba is back for today's episode. And Bubba, how are you doing? I'm I'm excellent so far. So can't wait to get into our little discussion today. Yeah, we've got some good stuff today. We're actually going to be talking about being a Disney foodie. That's that's the topic <laughs> today. What makes you a Disney foodie? Uh, it, but do you do you happen to have uh, the link to where I sent you that hilarious um, description of what a foodie is? You know what? I don't know. I'm looking for it right now, but I don't see. I can't seem to find. It. I think you might have texted it to me, which I'm using my phone right now for. Ah, well, I'll have to see if I can find it because it was. Oh, maybe I did text it to you. But it was like from the Urban Dictionary. Oh yes, actually, I kind of I see it right here. You did Facebook message me that. Yes. Okay, you've got to read <laughs> that number seven on there because I think it's kind of funny. Number seven. All right, it's loading right now. Let me see. Let me get to it. Um. Sorry. So, a foodie. This is from the Urban Dictionary. You said read number seven. Number seven is the one that I think is Number seven. Lots of them. So, a foodie. A person who thinks they know everything about food and the origins of food. Usually these people have zero experience actually cooking and also deal with the stress of a real restaurant environment. Yeah, it can be very stressful. Uh, they'll create blogs for themselves to create a sense of self-worth. Often this, is, this isn't their real job. They're at the same types, or, the, or these are the same types that hang out at pretentious, expensive coffee lounges <laughs> and totally dis destroy a, lay a layman's love of food and makes the average person feel like crap for going out to eat. <laughs> it really is neither of us. <laughs> A more like accurate uh, description I found is a foodie is a person who has a particular interest and knowledge in food. So I thought that was more of us because we aren't pretentious. Uh, we definitely don't go to the most expensive places to eat. <laughs> no. um, and, and being a Disney foodie, of course, you also have to be a big fan of Disney. Oh, definitely. And, and so... And that's what we're talking about. What makes each of us a Disney foodie? So uh, <laughs> when did you, let's start with our Disney fandom. When was your first trip to Disney? When did you just oh. know that you were like in love with Disneyland? It wasn't till late in my teens actually, because the first time I went, I vaguely remember I was probably maybe five years old when I first went to Disneyland and I, don't really remember much of it. And then I took a big gap from going that time. I probably, the next time I went, I was 14 or 15 and I went to Disneyland and uh, it was, I was had the, I had a ball, I had the time of my life. Uh, from there, I probably didn't go for like another three years. I went grad night, um, which was very hectic and crazy. Five hour wait for Indiana Jones ride, so. <laughs> um, but the summer after my second year in college, I believe, I was selected to go into the Disney college program. Uh, so I got to spend the summer working at Disneyland, living down in Orange County, and it was one of the best times that I've had. Uh, working as a cast member for Disneyland, I was actually construction security for California Adventure while it was under construction. So I got to see everything before anyone. Um, I even got to do a couple things before anyone, uh, you know, so it was 
really cool. You know, I got asked a lot of questions that summer about what, what's it like? Well, how's it going to be? So that's when my love grew. And then uh, the next year I joined the program again for the summer and my wife, who wasn't my wife at the time, she also got selected to go. No. And we, yeah. Taylor was your girlfriend at the time, right? Yes, she was. Okay. Yes. Um, so we started dating. Yeah. After I came back from my first summer at Disneyland. Uh, but, um, and it was another fun summer. She fell in love with it too. And we just had this love for it that, um, that was unexplainable. Both of us did together. So after that, we went a, a few times a year, each year after that. But in 2005, we became pass holders for the first time. It was actually the day the 50th anniversary started at Disneyland, which was May 5th, 2005. And it was one of the craziest days I've seen, but that's when we became pass holders and we've been pass holders ever since. So it's been almost 15 years, yeah, almost 15 years. Actually, it has been 15 years because May 5th has passed. So um, it's just a love that we we have together we love going to the park together we lived in uh, orange county for about six years so we would go to the park daily uh sometimes seven days a week even for like an hour or two uh you know just to hang out people watch eat something you know yeah you know what i feel like having breakfast this morning why don't we go have cinnamon roll and some coffee or you know and sit on the sit at the hub when we would do that uh it's just something that was that we still love i mean, wish wish we could do it right now we're about two and a half hours away uh from the park now so it's and the food i mean i love the food she loves food too um and we kind of like pick at different things you know let's try this this time let's try this this time if something you know barely comes out we'll try it uh and it's just a love that we have together and i'm very happy that we have that that's really cool. So yeah. my first trip, I was older because um, I grew up in Ohio. So that's quite far away from Orlando to, you know, make a drive down. So my first trip was actually part of a high school band trip. <laughs> and the school that I went to up north had a huge band. There was over 300, like close to 350 students in the band. So we were doing the Orange Bowl. We got to march in the Orange Bowl parade. So on the way down, we did three days at Disney. Of course, this was pre-Animal Kingdom. So we did Magic Kingdom, Epcot. And then at the time, it was uh, Disney's MGM instead of um, yeah. the Hollywood yeah. Studios. So we did those three parks. And it was so much fun. I mean, I grew up going to like Cedar Point and Geauga Lake, which is no longer around, and the Sea World that was up there. So this was a completely yeah. different experience to me walking into like Magic Kingdom and going on those attractions. And I, that was it. I was immediately sold. And from then on, um, and I was 16 at the time, would go every two to three years like i would save up in college i mean i paid for my way through college so what extra money i had i would save and that way i could take a week and go and be at disney world and my first time of being when we first started being annual pass holders was in 2009 because at the time al john had a job that he would have to travel for work and Florida was his territory. And he was there once a month. So mm -hmm. I had a job because at the time I was, I was able to do, you know, go wherever I wanted because I wasn't really working at that time. And I would go down, he's at work and I'd hang out at the parks all day. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we ended up getting the annual you know passes so that i mean we've been one since 2009 so oh wow long time not as long as yeah. you guys but yeah i mean it's uh it's great to be an annual pass holder too just you know all the perks and everything if you haven't looked into it i you know once the parks get open back up look into it i don't know maybe stuff stuff might change 
Uh, but it's definitely worth it being able to, you know, go to the park when you can and um, enjoying discounts on food and stuff like that. That's a big plus. And as many times as you've been, and I know you guys go still quite frequently and get, you eat at different places, you try different things. Of course, you'll still get some of your favorites, but have yeah. you dined at, and this is excluding Club 33 and the lounge, because those are private memberships. So we're not including those. Yeah. Other than that, have you been to every place at Disneyland? Yes, I have. I can't think of a place that I haven't been. I mean, I, I remember too going to the the fry cart when even even that was not there. Remember they had the McDonald's fry cart um, oh, yeah. there. <laughs> so I mean, I can't think of anywhere I haven't been to or dined in or gotten you know quick service or even I mean a churro or popcorn or something like that. It's I mean, now I mean now that I'm trying to think about it. No, I mean, even in California Adventures, I can't think, or Adventure, I can't think of anywhere I have not dined at, um, you know, off the top of my, no, I can't, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, I can say Walt Disney World has many well, uh, restaurants, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and I don't live within two and a half hours, but, I mean, this time last year, I had already been down to Walt Disney World five times. Like, I had been three times within six weeks at the beginning of the year. So I had been down there quite a bit, even if it was just a couple days. Now, usually when I go, I'm there for a good seven days, sometimes longer. I've been there as long as 13 days. Oh, so... Wow. You know, I've spent some time we in, because, you know, we're staying at a hotel or we're staying at a friend's place. We, we eat all of our meals at Disney. So even with all that said, I have dined at nearly every single restaurant. That's quite an achievement. Uh, and that's world. including like Four Seasons, Waldorf Astoria, that are uh, Swan and Dolphin, which are technically not Walt Disney World hotels because they're not owned by them, but they're on Disney property, including those restaurants. Yeah, wow. Um, there's a new place that opened up in the, the Japan Pavilion that I haven't been to. And then uh, Riviera wasn't open yet, so I haven't been down there for that and dined at those places but every other place yeah wow i mean i've done the most expensive which is victoria and albert's i've done which i've mentioned before bull and bear is one of my favorite places to eat and that's over at world of astoria we've talked about Ravello at four seasons the phenomenal italian food there up to going to disney springs and eating it uh Morimoto's restaurant. I mean, and, and I start thinking about it because at one time I used to keep track every time I dined somewhere. And I always try something new. Like that's been my thing since being an annual pass holder was I can't go and have favorites. I can't keep going back to the same place and getting the same thing. I've got to try new things on the menu, yeah. which is another thing about being a foodie is you can't, um, you really can't talk a lot about the food if you don't try something different all the time. Yes. And so it's a, sometimes it's really hard for me because I really want to go and have this like a favorite thing, but I'm like, nope, I got to try something new. That's hard. That is. But it's crazy. Like I've looked at it thinking I don't live there and I've been to Raglan Road 15 times. Wow. You know, things like that. <laughs> How, how have I been to nearly every restaurant? Almost all of them I've been three times all the way up to, you know, 15, 16 times at some of the places. Yeah. Except for where Victorian Alberts. I can't afford it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't afford it. <laughs> Victorian Alberts. Um, more, I've done that once. So that, that's, that's the exception to that. Yeah. So there's probably maybe... 
you know, counting downtown Disney. Of course, I haven't tried everywhere in downtown Disney here. Um, but one of the restaurants I haven't tried uh, is Storyteller's Cafe in uh, the Grand California. So that's somewhere that I've been meaning to try. They do have a character bre a breakfast, um, you know, in the morning. But, you know, during lunch and dinner, I definitely want to go there and give it a try. Oh, that's right, though. That, um, every place it, like that always has a like, delicious finding. I've, that's one place I always get. And I have been to a lot of them in, at Disneyland. Um, you know, it didn't, didn't hurt the year that we were the uh, dual coast annual pass holders. <laughs> too much oh, yeah, the... Uh... The premiere pass, yeah. Oh, yeah. I still have that. I was like, oh, it's pretty and gold and shiny, and I'm going to keep this forever. I need to do something with it, like put it up in a shadow box. <laughs> yeah. You know? Nice little frame for it. So you, though, have, have, like myself, have experience in the food industry. That I have plenty of experience. Um, when did maybe... you start working in restaurants, Baba? Um. Well, with food, I mean, you know, when I was in junior high, I would get dropped off at school at six in the morning and I would go help in the cafeteria. You know, my mom would go work at around, you know, six in the morning and she lived right by my junior high and, you know, would drop me off. But the people, you know, the staff there knew like, oh, he, you know, it's, it's okay. You can come and help out. So I've been, you know, you know, been doing that. I can't, jeez, I want to say over 20 years. Um, you know, I started out in, uh, after college doing, you know, cooks for restaurants, barbecue places, um, even worked in a soda fountain, a very popular one here in Bakersfield. And, uh, you know, from there, I just basically had did everything and, um, worked my way up, worked for different types of restaurants, um, Italian barbecue, um, Amer you know, American cuisine stuff like that but um you know and then I became management from there and I was a manager for over five years uh with one restaurant company and so I I basically have done it all and uh you know from the busing all the way to managing and every I've taken every test in California they are very strict when it comes to you know health laws and stuff like that. So I had all the certif certifications and permits and stuff like that that I needed to to be a manager, um, especially with ABC laws here in California. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, man, it's just, I've done everything you can think and think of in restaurants. So was your first job working in a restaurant? My first, very, my first paid oh. job was actually, um, you know, the soda fountain uh, here. Okay. You know, so, um, you know, doing, you know, serving ice cream, and making shakes and floats and selling candies and stuff like that. Uh, but then from after that, I started working for a barbecue place and quite the difference going from a soda fountain to a barbecue place because there I am eight in the morning getting brisket ready and racks of ribs all ready to go, getting the fire pit uh, ready to go to do some barbecue. And so, you know, quite the difference. And I love barbecue. And so. That was a good like start to my hearty food career was doing barbecue. <laughs> so that then because of working back in the kitchen, not just front of house, waiting tables, or being, you know, a host, you've got the the kitchen, you know, skill and knowledge on top of also the management thing. So that's really cool because exactly. I my my first job ever was being a hostess and i was actually a hostess for charlie <laughs> and uh so that was my very first first job and when i was in college i learned after my first semester i was like i i don't even know that i had gotten it all the way through my no i had my first semester I realized I was like, I cannot, I can't pay for school this way, you know, working, oh. I was in retail at that time. It's like 425, that, that's not going to cover college. Ooh. I'm going to be in debt forever with this. Wow. And I 
didn't want to take out any student loans. So my dad was like, I can loan you the money, but you, this, this is our deal. Like you have to pay me, uh, you know, this percentage of everything you make, you know, I'll, I'll supply the roof. I'll supply the car. You put the gas in it take care of the insurance on it, but I will take care of everything else because you're in college, you're going full time as long as you, you are working and you're, you know, paying. So I was like, I don't want to be paying my dad back, you know, forever. So I changed jobs and decided I am going to try and wait tables. And so I was 19 when I started waiting tables and learned really, really quick that I made a lot of money and was going to have my education paid off before I ever <laughs> even got to like my last year of school and made, you know, had changed, had worked at different restaurants. I started out at one that's no longer around. It was based uh, out of Atlanta and it had Southern American food, like twists on like fried green tomatoes and had like goat cheese and this roasted red pepper sauce. So it wasn't like what you typically think of Southern food. It was a, twist on Southern food. It was good. But then, you know, changed restaurants and worked at other places. But, you know, I had been hostess in the, the restaurant that was based out of Atlanta, Mix. When I worked there, I was hired to be a server. I was one of the lead servers. So I ended up being one of three people who got paid minimum wage rather than the 213 at the time. <laughs> And then I, if they were short staffed, like I would host, or they would put me as an expediter in the kitchen. And that's the oh. only kitchen experience that I have. Like oh, I really? don't have any formal restaurant. Oh, wow. No back of house. No, no back of house experience, really. No back of house. Wow. But even with that said, you know, and then you're like, well, can she cook? That's what I would be wondering at this point. But I can cook. But I did take uh, Viking Range, you know, the really fancy, expensive, oh, yeah. you know, brand of stuff. Well, they had a place here where they would do cooking classes. And so I started paying to do the different cooking classes. And it's taught by a chef because they have a chef there. And you get to use all, you're using all the nice fancy, expensive Viking Probably out and there. <laughs> and I loved it because I wanted to be able to, to really learn better how to be a good cook. I've got a good palate, and I've been told that by chefs that without having ever gone to culinary school, that I have a really good palate for being able to distinguish the different tastes in food, you know, without either that or having word back of house. Um, wow. So... I, and I've got culinary books, like up here, there's some culinary books and, you know, wow. food writing and, and that kind of stuff because I liked it so much and I enjoy eating, I enjoy cooking. I just wanted to get better and have a better understanding, especially, you know, and I keep doing that. I've got other books just because I want to be more educated and you know, if I'm going to be telling people about food and writing about food, I want to do it the most educated way I can. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And that's that's totally perfect, too, especially for a podcast like this. I mean, that's one thing I kind of regret. Two things I regret is not working food at Disneyland and, you know, never taking any type of culinary class. Uh, but you, but you learn. You have hands-on experience. I have hands-on experience. I mean, and I learned. Really you know, and that's why I, I went to classes because yeah, I didn't so, have the hand on, hands-on experience that way. I went to the school of hard knocks, so just <laughs> just basically learn as I went, and um, you know, doing barbecue, American food, Italian, some fine dining places too, in the back of house. Uh, you know, prep cook, uh, sous chef. You know all of it griller you know at one of the barbecue places there was this one i would just grill eight hours a day just grill meat that's it in front of people <laughs> so <laughs> so with all that experience back of house 
in the kitchen, getting to do the different positions, everything from, you know, like you said, working at a soda farm place and, you know, doing ice creams to grilling and barbecuing and just, you know, saute and all that. Do you have a favorite, like, spot in the kitchen that you like, like, doing that you just find to be? Well, I mean, I had, you know, I, I did have fun barbecuing, you know, in front of people um, just because they would see you cooking their food, you know, and you would have fun. And I would look at people and be like, hey, this is your steak right here, you know. <laughs> um, and they'd be, get kids would come up to the window and just, you know, put their hands against the glass and just look at you grill. Um, so that, that would probably have to be it. I mean, I did love work. I mean, front of house, I, always, I mainly shine front of house because when I served, I was one of the best servers everywhere I went um, even did a you know training too for other servers stuff like that lead server and um, wow there's a, a popular Italian restaurant like me and I guess we'll say at Olive Garden that I served that and man I was at, I was like on the top of every list when it came to wine sales and upsells and stuff like that because I love interacting with the customer you know or the yeah. guest you know it, that's something that I really shined at and could sell too. I was also a good salesman too, as people would say, my wife says that all the time. But, um, you know, I'm probably, you know, I would say serving is my best position out of every, every anything I've done. But, um, you know, just that or grilling, being a grill master, as they say. <laughs> And see, I think it would be, you and I would be, it would have been hilarious back in the day working together because <laughs> I was the same way. I'm, I'm, I liked telling people about the food and sharing yes. what I liked and finding out what, what they liked. And, oh, well, you should try this dish this way. And it actually ended up at one point on a menu, there was, there was a, a dish that was an eggplant dish. And it had this very rich, creamy sauce and crab, uh, the crab claws on top. And mm -hmm. it just needed something more. So whenever I would order it, I would order it with a side of angel hair pasta. And so then mm -hmm. I would have them put it on top and all the sauce and, you know, and then you just soak everything up. Well, I would tell guests that. And it got to the point after a couple of years, they ended up actually putting it on the menu that way because it became you know it was it was an upsell but a lot of people really wanted it and it is it's i and i i think you have to actually really like people to actually be good at sales because then it's not about to you it's not about selling anymore it's about making sure people are enjoying themselves and it just happens that you know just part of that is selling them because it used to be one of those things that they would do uh they would do contests well oh whoever sold the most of these new yeah. ones you would you know win one of the things i have is this really cool it's the size of a wine bottle looks like a wine bottle but it's and it's got etched in it and the wood is the label like like what looks like a wine label but I won that because I sold the most of some wine that particular <laughs> month, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know that. I, with the, the, with, when I worked at Olive Garden, there was a competition for each region. The top seller in each region would win a trip to Italy. And I was the top person in the region. But unfortunately, I moved back home. It was when I worked, lived down south, but I moved back home to Bakersfield. So I had to stop. I had stopped right in the middle of it, and yeah, I was just, oh well. I mean, <laughs> I could have went to Italy, but oh well. Uh, yeah, so, you know, and it's funny, too, when you're describing that about the crabs and the angel hair, I picture the scene from Ratatouille when he's trying to, <laughs> oh, oh, let's do it this way, let's do it this way. No, I'm going to take it out. <laughs> it was one of those things that, like, and it was these beautiful, like, stacked eggplants. So it's funny that you say that. And the sauce kind of just like oozed over the top of it like it does in that movie. So it's funny that you say that because I'm, well, you know what? That dish kind of did have a lot of the similarity to, <laughs> to the Ratatouille dish. 
No, so man, you need some back of house experience, but you do. I've seen you did run a a blog called Cooking with Mickey, where you did cook, you know, did demonstrations in front of the camera and brought it out to the world, which was really cool, and I really miss. You know, what's funny is I'm actually more nervous when I do something like that. It has nothing to do with the cooking or the cooking and the talking part. It actually has to do with the being recorded part. You know. <laughs> And people tell you all the time, like, why are you nervous when you can go back and redo something, you know? And I'm like, I don't, I just am. There's just something about me talking to a camera by myself that seems very nerve-wracking. <laughs> yeah, me. I can picture that. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. It's hard to not to talk to yourself because that's why I like doing this interaction thing with me and you, so. Oh, yeah. That's why I like the Aldon, he, he can, because of him having been a DJ, he's good at the talking to nobody thing, you know? <laughs> like, I, but I'm somebody, I like to interact, though. I like to be social, so I like having somebody to, to converse with, and I don't know, hopefully people find us quite entertaining. <laughs> well, we're telling people about our experience, because you don't want to go to a, a, a Disney food you know, podcasts and they're not fans of Disney, then they have, yeah, I, well, I like food. Well, who doesn't like food? I mean, come on. I mean, it's about a love of food and a love of Disney that, you know, that we want to share with everybody here. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So do you have a favorite, since we're doing this, let's just like wrap it up with some favorites. Do you have a favorite mm. restaurant? That you like to go to whether it be like quick service actually let's do one quick service then a table service and then like a favorite favorite meal when it comes to flavor you know there, there's places that have a lot of variety uh, stuff like that but um you know quick service i could never ever go wrong with plaza inn's uh fried chicken uh because it's it's just very moist inside very, the crispiness of the outer layer um and you know they always mix it up mix the vegetables up when i go so sometimes I, i'll get the vegetables but most time i'll get the double mashed potatoes which is home cooked mashed potatoes and gravy and there's just something about that that uh, i mean it's like a, i feel like i'm a part of walt too because that, that's walt's chicken right there it's something that he loved you know along with walt's chili you could get a carnation cafe you know, just, um, it makes you feel special, you know, knowing that, guys, you know, Walt, Walt ate this and loved it just like I do. And that, that, that is one of my favorite dishes there, you know, when it comes to quick service. Yeah. Cause it, I mean, it's already ready to go for you. You're in and out right there and, and maybe less than two minutes ready to eat. And that's what I love about that. Yeah, it is really good. Cause you let me, you, well, no, you had me try it the one time we went. <laughs> It's the first time we all went, yeah. Oh, yeah, with you, me, you, Al John, and uh, this geek. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. that was fun. <laughs> okay, so your What's favorite yours? table service then? Oh, Mo, we'll go my favorite, ta favorite table service. Who, oh man, that's gonna be a who I will, I'm gonna have to go with the Monte Cristo at Carnation, or not Carnation, at Cafe Orleans. Uh -huh. um, it's, I could eat that any time of the day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, midnight, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., whatever. It's, uh, you know, like I love crispy fried foods. And not only that, I love it when everything is so moist and flavorful inside. You have so many type of flavors when you bite into it from the powdered sugar on the outside, then you go into the batter and all of a sudden you're tasting jelly and Swiss cheese and ham all in one bite and it just blends together so perfect. You would never think something like that would would be, you know, so gorgeous in your mouth, but it is. And I love, <laughs> I love the Monte Cristo. We know when I, you can only get it at Cafe Orleans when you uh, dine in and, uh, it's like I said, it's just something that everybody must try when they go to the park. Wow. Yeah, I've had that <laughs> and it is, it, I've had it a couple of times. It's, it is really delicious. Um, and it's pretty big too, to where you can get a to-go box and save the rest of it and enjoy it. Um, you know, it's the, another time at 
some other section of the park, you know, when you get hungry again. Well, the last time we went, um, cause it was during, it was in January because Nam was going on and Alex, I wasn't with us, but we went and Taylor and I shared it. Yeah. You can share it too. <laughs> yeah. And we still, we still had food left over. Mm -hmm. Even Definitely. her and I sharing that. Yeah. Well, it, it, it is, it's a huge, it's a huge sandwich. So it's great to share and just take with you. Oh, I see. This is such a hard, hard. Yeah, I'm about to say for your quick service and table. I mean, yeah, you got so much to choose from too. So <laughs> mine, go, mine changes from the, like, <laughs> the uh, you know, depending on what I'm hungry for, and I'm starving right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go with, which is going to seem a little odd to some people. I'm actually gonna go with a a buffet place. Uh, for my favorite table service because uh, right now it just sounds delicious to me and that would be the beer garden and the Germany pavilion at Epcot uh, They over the years have Improved that menu so much from what it was when I first got my annual pass to now like they have these amazing rich soups like they do a potato leaf or a wild uh, a cream of mushroom but it's like wild mushroom it's not you know like the stuff you get in a yeah it's so good you want to have more of it and then they always have a carving station you've got everything from sour brought in to um wiener schnitzel it's a uh they do a pork schnitzel and then the one of my favorite sauce i always have to have what's called uh yager sauce on mine and it's a hunter's sauce so it's uh made with like a beef broth is the you know the base of it but it's a creamy mushroom but it's dark it's not a, a light colored mushroom and it has great flavor it's one of my favorite things but i love like you said where it's like nice and tender on the inside and then outside on the schnitzel it has that nice crispy batter and they always have pretzel bread, which I love pretzel <laughs> bread. And then they have like the little salads and stuff. So, you know, you've got like a creamy cucumber and like a, a pickled tomato, onion and cucumber and a slaw and things like that that you don't usually think of as being German dishes. At least I don't because I, you know, grew up with those things in my house, you know, it was, oh, cucumber salad. And, uh, everything's always always good you always leave full and they've got everything from they have the best apple strudel there and they've got a nice mm. uh vanilla bean sauce to like put on it so good but i would have to go with that being at least at this moment is going to be the place that i would pick and then quick service I think I would have I would have to go with um, Pecos Bill Tall Tail Inn and Cafe. I, their their food is good. I love the topping bar. I can have Mexican and add some, you know, salsa and guacamole and sour cream and extra cheese and all that stuff to whatever I get. Nice. Uh, and I always try. I've tried every, I think everything but the salads since they changed the menu, but what it used to, I used to always get the salad, but now like they've got the fajitas and all that kind of stuff. So I always get something different. And the nice thing is, is it's a lot of food. So you could even share, cause sometimes I'll, John and I'll do that. We'll get the fajita dinner and you know, we always kind of like, if when we get that, I'm like, do you want the chicken or steak? So I'll that say, chicken know. or steak, which one do you get? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we we switch it up, you know, it, it just kind of d depends on the day of what we get, but their food for quick service is always hot, it's always good, and it is always busy, which makes using the app to order yeah. really nice. Wow, okay, that's cool. Well, is there anything else you can think of that we didn't discuss that we should share? No, I mean, you know, just... We just want to get the people out there to understand where we're coming from when we talk about food. Um, 
And I hope you guys understand that we do love food. We love Disney and we, uh, you know, try to share everything that we can with you when it comes to, you know, hit or misses. But, you know, we always love to hear from you guys too about what you, what shines when you go to the park, what food stand out too. So, um, no, I mean, I think we covered everything, covered everything. I think we did too. Yeah. Yeah, and if anybody ever has questions for us about anything, even if it's something about our, you know, you want to know what our favorite Italian restaurant is, or what are, you, what are your favorite, you know, foods at this particular park, or you've got something like that, you guys can always hit us up with those, and we can talk about that, too. Cool. Well, I think that is everything for today, Bubba. You want to tell everybody where they can find you? They can find me at on Instagram at big underscore Bubba underscore B. As far as Dining at Disney, you can find us at diningatdisney.com. We are working on updating the website as well as you can also follow us on all of our social medias. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you know when we post new content. And subscribe to us on Anchor or any of your favorite podcasting places so you can catch all of our new shows. Until next time, I'm Kristen. Of course, with me is my fun co-host, Bubba. This podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or its holdings and is intended for entertainment purposes.